I'm Nathan Hobby, biographer of the Australian writer Catherine Susanna Pritchard. Why read Catherine Susanna Pritchard in the year 2020, 51 years after her death? I want to answer that question by focusing on the joys her books can bring us all these years later. I think Pritchard's most underrated book is The Wild Oats of Hand. When Angus and Robertson published it in 1928, they marketed it as a children's story. And for this reason, it's often been overlooked, but it's a book about childhood rather than a book for children. The joy of reading it is to be taken inside the mind of a spirited girl and experience what childhood felt like in the late Victorian era. The natural world is enchanted for the main character, Han, in her adventures in the bush around Cataract Gorge in Tasmania. The prose is dreamy and beautiful. The joy of reading 1930s Haxby's Circus is to immerse yourself in the dramas of a struggling family circus as it moves around Australia. The central character, Gina Haxby, begins as an innocent acrobat who breaks her back at the start of the novel and shows both resilience and despair as she becomes, by the novel's end, a world-weary, middle-aged clown. It is a notable depiction of disability and a story of women's lives, concerned with the experiences of pregnancy and childbirth and emotional abuse. Pritchard's short stories give the joy of reading a virtuoso of the form. Her first Western Australian story, Christmas Tree from 1919, is a poignant portrait of wheat farmers who have had to sell up. Balancing politics and aesthetics unusually well, the story reveals the injustice of the banking system through the eyes of its victims. Grey Horse, winner of the 1924 Art in Australia short story competition, parallels the respective sexual frustrations of a grey stallion not allowed to mate and an orchardist next door whose marriage turns sour. The Buccaneers from 1935 is a deceptively light-hearted story that captures the disappointments of ageing as it follows a group of friends who return each year to Rottnest Island. The well-realised depic depictions of the Wheat Belt, the Hills of Perth and Rottnest in these three stories give some sense of the range of Pritchard's settings. Across her writings, she captures so much of the Australian landscape. Although her short stories are out of print, Many have been digitised in their original appearances in magazines and are now available through the National Library of Australia's Trove site. One of the best ways to make a lot of people hate a writer is to force them to study her at high school. Pritchard has that mixed blessing with her 1929 novel Kuna Do on many high school reading lists over the last 50 years. The joy of reading it is that of a tragic and beautifully told story of a station owner's repressed love for an Aboriginal woman, Coonadoo. Unfortunately, it also contains damaging stereotypes and assumptions about Aboriginal people. And there are important responses by Indigenous critics, Janine Lean and Larissa Behrend to consider alongside it. Reading Pritchard's work takes you on a trip to a lost Australia. She wrote many of her books between the two world wars and she captures what it meant to be Australian at a time just outside of our living memory. She wrote about the group aspects of life particularly well, interactions with families, communities, and work teams. Her books also give us the pleasure of an engrossing read, her stories driven by plot and character and standing up well all these decades later.